Hi everyone, Kevin here from Golf Guy Reviews, and in this video today, I wanted to do a first impressions of the brand new Puma RSG golf shoes. Now, these are a limited edition spikeless pair of golf shoes from Puma, and they are doing a lot of things quite differently compared to you know, a lot of the golf shoes out there. Now, I wanted to do this first impressions video, not only to give everyone a closer look in regards to some of the style and design elements of this limited edition shoe, but also actually to let you know, importantly, how they fit on feet in case you're thinking about buying them. Now, clearly this is not my full review. I've not actually worn these out on the golf course yet, so I can't tell you how they're gonna perform. But what I can tell you is how they fit and feel. And before we go through any of the details on the shoe, the first thing I just wanted to kind of highlight is that these shoes do seem to come up a bit small. So I ordered these in a UK nine, which is my regular size. And in a lot of Puma shoes, they actually seem to come up a little bit bigger traditionally. Certainly the NXT Ignite range, which is a shoe I wear a lot, does have quite a bit of room and does seem to be a little bit longer than normal. These do seem to come up a little bit small. So if you are considering buying the new RSG range, I personally would recommend maybe trying them half a size bigger, but definitely see if you can try them or at least order a couple of pairs to make sure you get a pair that fits your feet properly. Uh, these are still the UK nine version and I've had to order a nine and a half uh, just so that I can get out on the course and let you know what they actually are like to use out on the golf course. Now, I definitely wanna get these out on the golf course because they've got such a chunky midsole uh, that I'm just interested to see how they actually perform and how stable they are out on the course. So once I've got a pair that fits me right and I've put a few rounds under my belt, look out for my full review video. I'll post a link to it above, that's the wrong side. I'll post a link to it above. Um, so you know, keep a look out for that and I'll let you know what I think of these once I've given them a full review. But for now, this is just a first look and let's take a look at some of the design elements of the shoe. So the Puma RS sneakers have become a real hit lately uh, because of their bold, chunky design and this bold kind of color block design that they've got going on, um, and the fact that actually they're quite affordable, so generally retailing in the UK for well under £100. Now, these golf shoes at the moment retail in the UK for £90, which again is a pretty decent price point. When you think of some of the Nike spikeless shoes, like the Air Max 1Gs, uh, they retail at £100, uh, or even the Air Jordan spike shoes, uh, they retail for well over £150. So coming at £90 for a limited edition shoe, that's a real good price point. So hopefully you'll be able to pick up a pair of these. Now, I also picked up the white and gray versions that I've got here because I thought I'd see which ones I prefer. But once they arrived and I put both of them on, I definitely preferred the green and orange versions. I kind of figured that if you're gonna get a pair of golf shoes that really stand out and look this different in regards to their chunky design, you might as well make sure that they really look different. Now, I've got enough pairs of kind of white golf shoes out there, and although these look cool and loads and loads of people are gonna like these, um, for me personally, I just fell in love with the green and orange the moment I saw them and just decided, yeah, definitely these are the ones that I'm gonna keep. Interestingly, with the white and gray, I did run a poll on my social media and these were the ones which did prove more popular. And don't forget there is a black version as well. And then interestingly, the hill part here is this silver material actually. So there's a little bit of reflection to it. I'm not sure if the camera is gonna quite pick that up there. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely silver rather than gray and there's a bit of a metallic look to it. Um, and yeah, they do look really, really cool and really, really clean and fresh. But personally, I just decided that these were the ones for me. I really hope you're enjoying this video today and you're finding it helpful, so hit that like button if you are. And if you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can keep up to date on all my latest reviews of golf shoes, clothing and tech, right here on Golf Guy Reviews. Now the original version of the RS running shoes was actually released back in the 80s, and in fact RS stands for running system. So there was a version of these shoes, I'm not sure if you've seen them before, that actually had a little computer on the back of them. Um, way before you had GPS watches or any technology in the shoe, that's kind of where the RS system, the running system, originated from. So these are based on running trainers. And more recently, you know, they've been kind of reworked and redesigned. So this particular version is based on the RSX3 or RSX cubed, I don't know which way to say it, with this whole kind of chunky midsole design and the bold colors. So in terms of the midsole there, you've got this very chunky, thick midsole there, um, and you've just got a whole lot of layered materials there. In regards to the upper, then this is using a microfiber leather upper. Um, what Puma have said is that they've actually got a thin TPU film layer over the top. Now, I haven't established whether that's only over the upper or whether it's over the midsole, 
doesn't feel like it's over the midsole. Um, so I think maybe it's over the upper only, and that's to help it keep it clean. So again, when I get these out on the course, I'll be interested to see how clean I can keep these. Interestingly as well, what Puma have said is that this is a seam sealed upper. So you can kind of see here on all the kind of areas where you would find a seam, you can see that they've overlapped the material so you don't have any exposed seams. Uh, you've got that on the inside as well there. Although actually I've just spotted, there's a seam there along the outside on the biggest kind of part of the uh, rear medial side of the shoe but you know i think that's going to be absolutely fine in regards to waterproofing but puma have done that to make sure these stay as waterproof as they can be um, and they are giving these a one year waterproof warranty so it'll be interesting to see how these actually hold up another thing to note on the design of the shoe is that you can see here that you've got these different sections of the foam here on the shoe you've got both the same on the outside and on the inside of the shoe and the part on the front here, you've got a bit of texture to it as well. Uh, so you can see this kind of square pattern uh, on this part of the foam here, and the rest is then just kind of smooth there on the shoe. Uh, so just interesting kind of different design feature as well on the shoe. A few other design elements to highlight, and you can see first of all here that you've got the RSG logo there on the tongue with a lightweight kind of thin tongue pull tab on the front there. I'm not sure I'd want to pull on that too much because that does seem uh, quite thin and you can see here that you've really got these chunky uh, laces on the shoe as well which kind of match the whole kind of chunky vibe that the shoe's got going on. Now what is really really interesting for me is actually when you put these shoes on although they have got this seriously kind of chunky look initially I thought that they're going to have loads and loads of room in them but actually they're they're quite tight fitting. I mentioned at the very beginning there that these do come up small so I've had to order a bigger size but in regards to just generally the fit and feel on feet, they do feel like they're locking down my feet quite well. My heel definitely feels nice and kind of tucked in there on the shoe. Um, and there's quite a fair amount of padding on the ankle area there, and especially on the heel too, which really kind of helps keep it filled like it's locked in. It will be really, really interesting to see how these actually perform given that it looks like they kind of sit up extremely high. I just wonder whether I'm gonna to be topping every shot that I hit, uh, but I'm not entirely sure, but we'll see when we get these out on the course. Now, personally, what I think Puma are really going for with these shoes is actually going for a trainer first approach uh, and then golf shoe second. So the idea I really think behind this trainer is that you can easily wear this off the course, um, but if you wanna go for a round of golf, then definitely you can play some golf in it as well. Will it be a high-end performance shoe? No, not at all. But I don't think that's the market they're going for. Um, I think this is a real good idea in regards to just kind of casual up the world of golf. Certainly gonna to appeal to a younger audience. I'm getting older now, and to be honest, this appeals to me. I really like it. I think it looks a bit more like a dad shoe, to be honest, in regards to the chunkiness of it. And that's definitely a specific style uh, that I know a lot of people watching this video just won't really like. They'll look at this shoe and go, that's hideous. Whereas a lot of other people will look at this video and go, this shoe is absolutely gorgeous. So it's really gonna be divisive. So let me know down in the comments which category do you fall into? Do you love it or do you hate it? Taking a close look in the shoe and you have got a fusion foam inner sole there. Um, and you can kind of see here actually, if I highlight it, you've got quite a thick area on the heel there, which is just adding a little bit of extra padding. And also you can see on the inside of the shoe there, uh, on, on the kind of instep of the foot, you've got quite a high raised section as well, uh, adding some additional padding and support on the inside of the shoe. Now that's really interesting because a lot of golf shoes you get don't necessarily provide much support, certainly in that arch area of the shoe there. Now for me personally, I don't particularly need that and I do find that shoes that have got aggressive kind of real high arch support actually end up hurting my feet if I end up wearing them for quite a long time. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how I get on with these. While we're talking about the feeling underfoot, we'll also take a look at this chunky midsole foam that you've got here. So this is what Puma are calling their fusion foam. Um, and the whole point of that is to give you a higher energy return. Now, I've not had too much experience, to be honest, with the fusion foam. Um, with Puma, I know they've got the very popular Ignite foam, which I'm a big fan of, uh, and which is very, very soft and gives a decent amount of energy return. I've not got much experience with a fusion foam, so you'll have to wait to my full review and I'll let you know how it feels out on course. In regards to how I felt just kind of wearing it about the house, then I would say that it's not necessarily the softest feeling foam out there at the moment. Um, maybe it feels a bit more like a running shoe rather than specifically uh, a very soft, squishy foam for a golf shoe. But as I say, we'll see how it performs over 18 holes soon. 
So lastly, let's take a look on the bottom of the shoe here and you've got this spikeless outsole. Now, this is a carbon rubber combination outsole and you can see here that you've got a variation of different kind of lugs. So at the front here, you've got these kind of, I suppose, slightly conical uh, lug shapes towards the front. And then on the, in this section here, on the medial side at the front and the forefoot, you've got more square lugs. Then on this section here, you've got these kind of, I suppose, like bracket shaped lugs. Um, and then towards the rear of the shoe, you've got these circular kind of spikes at the back. And then we go back to the same spikes that you've got at the front at the rear of the shoe here. So that's a really interesting combination. I don't know how much specific kind of design has gone into that or whether it's just in there because it looks cool. Um, and I've got to be honest that they're not the most aggressively styled spikeless shoes out on the market. So again, this is what leads me to believe this is more of a casual leisure kind of golf shoe rather than a high performance golf shoe. That's not a problem, you just need to know what you're getting when you go in. So I don't think I'm gonna have any problems with these wearing these out on the course in regards to the summer and the spring months and even moving into the autumn, but these are definitely not gonna be a pair of golf shoes that are gonna provide me maximum traction when the kind of course is starting to get wet out there. Um, and definitely I'll be going for a spike shoe instead. So that's something interesting. And again, I'll let you know how these grip out on the course once I do my full review. Interestingly with the spikeless bottom as well, what I would say about this is that it does feel very grippy and rubberized. So with some spikeless golf shoes, you know, if you step on a slippery surface, I don't know if you've ever like gone to a supermarket in a spikeless golf shoe, sometimes you're slipping all over the place and you've got no traction whatsoever. These feel that these can actually be used like an everyday trainer um, and I'd have no problems wearing these on most kind of surfaces to be honest um, and then wearing them out on the golf course too. So they are very, very versatile indeed. So there you go, that's my first look and first impressions of the brand new Puma RSG golf shoes. I'm really, really looking forward to getting these out on the course once I get them in a half a size bigger, uh, because you know, there's no point cramming your foot into a pair of golf shoes and then finding them uncomfortable. You've got to make sure that you're comfortable first before you go out on the course. But once I've got them shoes, I will definitely be hitting the golf course and then you can check out my full review. I really hope you enjoyed this video today, so hit that like button if you did. And if you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can keep up to date on all my latest reviews of golf shoes, clothing and tech right here on Golf Guy Reviews.